Good afternoon, everyone. So this particular kind of discussion, this video, is really going to focus on talking about black holes. Okay, so the videos I've posted so far have kind of been a combination of talking a little bit about things we might find in space, how we could get there, and what exactly we might need to survive in the various situations of the various planets we might find ourselves in the distant future. Okay, now I want to focus specifically on black holes because black holes are such a fascinating and kind of mysterious topic that pop up a lot in various science fiction and various movies. So it's kind of good to talk about exactly what's going on and kind of explain that the idea that black holes are not these giant things that just kind of run around in the, in the universe and devour everything in sight. All right. The reality is a bit more complicated than that. So hopefully, before we talk about this, you watch this video, I hope you've already watched the Kurskasat video on black holes. And I hope you kind of, and if you don't mind, if you want to click on this little link that says pre-reading for, Na for NASA, I just want you to go through and read a little bit about black holes so that when I talk through this, some of the language I'm going to use, you're already familiar with. All right. So if you haven't done either of those two things, I want you to pause the video right now, go through and look at those two things, and then come back and we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on. All right, so hopefully you're back after you've watched the video and read that particular kind of explanation about black holes. So honestly, let's get started with what it is. And I'm not really gonna write a ton of stuff on these notes as I go through it. Um, I'm, that's up to you to kind of write stuff down. I'll kind of show some pictures. I'll write a couple things down, but how extensive you want your notes is really up to you, okay? So let's start with what it is, all right? A black hole is kind of a weird thing, but honestly, the easiest way to describe it, it's the remnant of a dead star. That's kind of the first thing for it, all right? And honestly, really what they all are is a really, really, really dense object sitting out in space, okay? So it's a really, really dense object. Now, the reason that that density is so important is because what happens is that the black hole basically is this really, really dense object that's been crushed and it sits in space and its gravity is so concentrated on one specific point in space time that it starts to warp everything around it. And because it's so dense and so focused on one particular part of space time, it basically creates a situation where space time is so warped that not even light has enough energy to get out. It can't move fast enough to escape. All right. And that's what makes a black hole. What's what gives it its name? Because basically nothing can escape it. It's this kind of just big void of darkness that we can't see out of because nothing can get out of it. Well, at least nothing that we have discussed yet. All right. So what it is, it's a runo dead star. It's a really, really dense object in the center of it is the most important piece. And it's the most mysterious of all of them because math, it's theoretically should exist, but it also theoretically shouldn't exist because at the center of the black hole is the singularity. And what the singularity is, is basically it's the point in the black hole where all of the mass that's still there is concentrated. But what's kind of weird about it is that according to the math and the Einstein's equations and the various other equations that have been used to solve it, a singularity has all the mass, but it has no size whatsoever, which causes some weird issues, all right? And that's a very strange thing that's going on. And honestly, it's kind of something where we're still not quite sure what exactly that singularity looks, looks like. But we do know what a black hole is basically something that is this big spherical void in space that has so warped everything around it that not even light can get out of it, all right? Now, how do we make it? And that's kind of the more interesting question starting to put on our mad scientist hat. So how do we make a black hole? All right. Well, the simplest way to make a black hole is to find the right star. All right. Basically, what we're going to find out is that when stars, and it talked about it in the Kurskazat video, a star is basically driven by two things. So originally, when stars are starting to be formed, all of this kind of hydrogen and helium gas in the universe starts to kind of congregate towards each other because it's attracted by gravity. And as more and more gas is pulled together, the gravity between all of them gets stronger. And eventually what happens is the gravity is so strong that it starts to squish the center of the star and it actually basically ignites and it starts to fuse things together. And we're going to do a separate kind of discussion about nuclear fusion because that's a fascinating topic in and of its own. But once the star's kind of fusion begins, 
for the longest time, the gravity of the star and kind of the inside of the star that's radiating energy balance each other out and the star stays stable. After a while though, as the star starts to die and run out of fuel, what happens is the radiation inside for the fusion kind of starts to weaken and that's all it takes. So as the star dies, the fusion forces basically, or we can say they're really nuclear forces, start to weaken inside the star. Now, once that happens, the problem is as soon as the core starts to weaken, the forces kind of keeping it from collapsing on itself start to diminish, the star collapses on itself. All right, and you can imagine what it looks like when all the gravitational, when all the mass on top of it comes together at once, all right? And if the star is big enough and it collapses fast enough, it actually forms a, a supernova, which is the most energetic explosion in the galaxy, all right? Now, not what is important about this is that so as the stars rise, nuclear force starts to weaken inside the star, causing collapse. All right, when the star collapses, it squishes a bunch of the mass together really, really, really tightly, and then when it explodes, most of the mass is ejected into space, but a small amount of the mass stays behind. And because it was squished so much, what happens is that now the stuff that's left over is super, super dense. And it's so dense that it forms the singularity for a black hole. Now, not everything turns into a black hole, all right? Not every star in the universe is going to die and become into a black hole. There are very specific requirements that it has to meet. One of them is a size requirement, all right? Not every star has enough mass when it dies to turn into a black hole. In fact, <clears throat> our sun is not have enough mass. In fact, what it's what the requirements seem to be is that in order for a star to turn into a black hole, three to four stellar mass masses worth, so basically four times the mass of the sun, has to be left over after a supernova explosion for it to turn into a black hole. All right, so our sun is never going to turn into a black hole when it dies. Other stars, however, have enough mass that when they blow up and collapse, they will turn into black holes, all right? Now, black holes act very interestingly in certain ways, but in other ways, they act very mundane. And what I mean by that is that they still follow the same rules of gravity. If I had a black, if the sun decided to turn into a black hole tomorrow, all right, and they talked about it in the video as well, gravitationally, no one would know anything. Nothing, it would not feel like anything had happened because the mass and everything that happened if we turn the sun into a black hole, the mass of the sun would still be exactly the same as it was previously, the way we would do it, which we would just squish it really, really tight, all right? So a black hole still attracts things with gravity. It can still have things orbit it. In fact, lots of things orbit black holes. It's only until you get too close that things start to get a little disastrous. And the point of the closeness, the point of no return for us, is referred to as the event horizon, all right? And honestly, we can call this, this is the edge of no return. The event horizon is the section of the black hole where if you go past that, if you cross that line, you cannot escape because you would have to be moving faster than the speed of light, all right? And it kind of goes back to the first video, one of the first videos we talked about the exit fee for the Earth, all right? Well, it's the same idea for a black hole, but in this case, the exit fee for a black hole is more than anyone in the universe can pay because it's more and it's more than the speed of light, which is impossible. So once you cross that line, there's no going back. You're just going to keep falling into the black hole and you will never escape. Now, what you go into is up for debate. Most people think you'll probably die some horrible death. How that'll happen, that's up for debate. But one way that it might happen is referred to as spaghettification. And all, what is that exciting thing? Well, it's basically turning yourself into spaghetti. So what spaghettification is, and I'm actually gonna post a video as well of Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about it. But what spaghettification is, is basically when you get close enough to a black hole, like really, really dangerously close, 
the gravitational pull on you is so strong that even small distances, maybe like the distance between your head and your feet, are large enough in the eyes of the black hole that gravity pulls on them completely differently. So your feet could be experiencing a force several thousand times stronger than your head, which means what happens is you basically start to get stretched out like a noodle and you start to turn into spaghetti. That's the reason of calling it spaghettification. So spaghettification, you get pulled into a noodle and however else you want to describe it. All right. Now, that's the first half of this video, talking a little bit about just exactly how we form black holes, how they act. The second half of this is going to be talking about, do they stay here forever? What are some weird examples of black holes? All right. And then we're going to actually calculate, you're going to do some mad science. You're going to calculate how small you would have to squish something to turn it into a black hole. All right. So that's what we're going to stop for this is the first half of this video. The second half is going to cover the second page of this.